Hello everyone, Larry Sashwell in the shop today doing some woodworking. Uh, it's a typical Georgia rainy day, 37 degrees out. We're gonna go to Texas here to see the Rutledge ladies and Jake here uh, soon. And I, Laura requested some mushrooms about a year ago. <laughs> well, this is another video, but I wanna take the girls uh, a fairy house and I was digging around. I've actually been cleaning up. You may not notice it behind me, but on the other side, it looks a lot better. Uh, and I found this stump that I, who knows, I've had it for a while. I dug around some more and I found the top to this. I don't know why I cut it off. At one point I made some candles, rustic candles and that rustic bird feeder uh, that the birds really like. Maybe I had that in mind. I also made a uh, succulent planter out of one but uh i think i'm going to try to make a double story here since i found the top a two-story fairy house uh that's my vision i'm not happy unless i'm creating something and uh this is my happy place um i will need to thin these walls down but before i thin the walls down i want to smooth out the side because once i smooth uh, thin those walls down this is going to be a pretty fragile build. And uh, i got to figure out a way to put a floor in here. I think I'll put a floor in here, although that's uh, really pretty rotten down there. Not rotten. I mean, it's solid. It's not going to rot anymore. Isn't that a cool stump? Well, let's see if I can pull this off. First thing I'm going to do is use this 80-grit uh, um, mop here and clean up this uh, outside. Get ready to go here. One of the problems I'm having is how to hold this to hollow it out because it's gonna get thin. I'm gonna be using this uh, mini turbo uh, ArborTech cutter and it's a relatively new tool for me. I'm not real skilled with it yet and it could ruin this in just a flash. And I certainly don't wanna get my hands anywhere near those carbide cutters. Uh, so I've got my strap uh, on here and then that's why that big piece of board was in the first one. It feels pretty secure, but this thing torques up and uh, it could go flying. So uh, I'm gonna plug this in now and see if I can make some progress here. This could be the end of the project. For as rotten as this looks, it's amazingly hard. I think it's oak, but it looks like I've gone over halfway, so I'm really pleased with that. Gonna be a mess to clean up, huh? Made it quite a bit bigger. Uh, I think next I'll try to get a floor in here.
That actually went better than I expected. I'm going to be using this piece of wood here. I'm going to be painting the insides of these white. And to help me mark the bottom here, I'm going to go ahead and spray it down at the bottom. See if I can't get a good indication of where to cut that. That's a good start. I'm gonna let that dry. Now, I'm not expecting these to be handed down generation to generation, but I do know that in the Texas, they've got that high humidity and a lot of moisture. So I'm gonna coat these with the uh, some penetrating epoxy from Total Boat. It's a two to one ratio, and I'm gonna add acetate to help disperse it. And now the acetate, I'm going to mix this up for about a minute. This is a cure, this is a very slow curing epoxy. In fact, it's not going to cure maybe two or three days. They have a cold version and a warm version. I'm in the warm basement, so I'm using the warm version. And I understand that under mixing epoxy, it's a bad thing. Now, I don't like the shine that this will leave. Maybe I'll tone it down. I can always spray some poly over it, satin poly. It's really going in nicely. So it's been a day and these uh, are pretty dry actually, a lot drier than I thought they might be. So it's time to get a floor in there. I think I'll start with this one. This one's going to have some missing places, but uh, we'll see what we can do. So I've uh, got the floor fitted. I gave it one coat of paint. It's still a little wet inside, but I need to decide where the door goes. And since this is such a large crack right here and uh, relatively flat sides here, I think this is where the door will go. So uh, let me figure that out. I think we'll put a couple of windows in this side and uh, get started from there. The only tool to do this with is the coping saw. I guess I could use a jigsaw, but this wood is pretty fragile. <laughs> So I've got the window and the door cut out. <clears throat> I want to add a staircase. So I'm going to start adding a staircase right here.
So the last thing I did before I quit yesterday was uh, put this window on. It's held on with uh, E6000. It was out of this uh, little bottle I found in the recycling. And uh, I'm ready to put in a fireplace, I think. I'm going to put the fireplace right here. I've already painted it black and it's dry. I'm going to use this E6000 glue. And I think what I want to do is lay a bead down. And then place some rocks on it. Ooh, it's running. So I need to get some rocks on that right away. Like I said, I didn't know what I'm doing. That's okay. The fireplace would just be a little bit bigger than intended. It's going to take a while to dry. So I'm really uh, racked my brain trying to figure out how I want to keep these two units together. And I think I'm going to try magnets. So I have a 3 8 inch drill bit here. And I have 3 8, and three eight inch uh, super magnets here earth magnets. It's the bottom of the top. Ooh, that drills fast. Not quite deep enough. But very close. All right, that should work. Um, and then I have these doweling points to tell you where you've uh, drilled. up some five minute epoxy. Doesn't take a lot. Equal parts. Use a chopstick. 